How's it going everybody? My name is Avery and this is a video where we'll be talking about C++ and we're covering all the basics of C++ within about 10 minutes. I made a past video that was pretty similar to this but instead of actually doing the code we went and just talked about some things and I drew out some things on a like a on a drawing board. So this one is going to be basically the same concepts but we're going to be doing some actual code. Don't worry about getting a compiler or getting an editor to do anything you can go ahead and just use this link in the description and you can run all the code in here but feel free to use your own editor or compiler as well it suggests VS code if you want to go simpler and not install anything I guess you can just do notepad or notepad plus plus I think that might come on Windows and for compiling it's gonna be G plus plus or min GW but to make it simpler we're doing everything from here so although these things are going to apply to C++, they can be used in almost all programming languages because most programming languages have the same concepts. This right here is here by default, but let's just ignore this for a moment and I'll just come down here. Programming in general and C++ is just like math. So you know, 100 minus 60 equals 40. And once you get into fifth or sixth grade, you'll start learning about variables. I think it's around then. So you can say x equals 100. So now if you do x minus 60, that's still 40. So programming is basically the same thing. You have calculations, and you can have variables that represent some things. This x is a variable. And you can have also functions, where you can have y equals mx plus b. So you can have a function like that um, for repeating a calculation. There are several different variable types. There's an integer, and an integer is a whole number, um, such as one. There is a double and a float. Um, for this video, we're not going to go too much and talk about them, but they're basically just things that have decimal points. So a double and a float will have decimal points. There's also a Boolean. A Boolean is something that is true or false. So it's used for having a switch, basically, or for checking something. It can be represented as 0 and 1 as well. There's also a character, and a character is usually just a single letter, or it could be a number or a symbol of any sort. That's basically anything else that's on your keyboard is a character. These right here could be done for using math, but this isn't going to be using math. So if you have a 1 in there, you can't really do math with that 1, because it doesn't know the actual value of 1. And there's also a string, and a string is basically all the characters you want all just combined together so that way you can have a word or sentences or even paragraphs they're all within the big string quote string is using something from C++'s standard library a library is a other code that you include in your code so when you declare a string you need to use standard and that's what this is up here include IO stream so it's input output and then stream so this is a different library and this is basically someone else's code that we're going to be using. And we're going to need that for this STD. Also, everything in C++, every single line, ends with a semicolon, just like this. And let's look at this example of y equals mx plus b. So if we want to have a function that is y equals mx plus b, let's just say, for this case, we'll just make an integer. Everything's a whole number. It's going to be an integer, and then we can call it the name of our function and call it line. And a function is going to have a parentheses, just like this up here. The parentheses is where you pass in the values. So to find y, we're going to pass in mx plus b. So you can do int m, comma, int x, and int b. And then you can open your function with a curly brace and close it with it down there. And here, we can actually define it. So we can do int y, and we can do y equals m times x plus b. So it's as simple as that. And our function type is an integer, so that means when you run it, it's expecting an integer. So we're just going to say return y. So now we're returning the integer y. So jumping up here to default code, there's the function main. Main runs anytime you run a C++ program. And main is usually has a function type int, which returns a zero. The zero is basically for an error. So you run your program, it runs main. Then after it's done running, it returns if there was an error or not. And by default, you're going to say there was no error. And here's another example from this STD. And this is C out. So it's output. 
So it's going to output this to your output over here. So we can go ahead and this is actual code. Let's move this up here. And let's go ahead and delete this. And click run. As you can see, this didn't run because by default it only runs main and we never told it to run this. But as you can see, it outputted hello world and also returned zero, which you can't see, but um, I assume this thing would have something else if you're turning other errors or whatnot. And this right here is a comment. As you can see, there's two slashes and it doesn't do anything. It's just for, you know, you can comment whatever you want. If you want to have a larger comment, you can use a slash like that and you can close it off like that. Now anything inside of here will be a comment. And that's just for helping you organize your code and taking notes on what things do. We can also do std end l, that's for ending the line. So that way you can print to the next line. So in here we can do line, this is the name of our function, and let's print it right here. That's the new inline, and we can pass it one, two, three. So that's the m, x, and b. So that's the slope, the x, and the y intercept, if I remember that correctly. So now when you run this, it's going to actually print out or display what this function is going to calculate and then return. So we can click run, and it might take a second, and here we have it, five. So using this line function, we plug in these values and we get five. So if you also wanted to keep track of it, you can do another int y, and you can set that just like here. So now that y is going to set to the output to that function as well. And then here we can let's just do that right below. And that's another way. So you can save the output of a function and then use that output for other things. So a function, the point of it is to reuse code. So another thing that's used for reusing code is with a loop. It's something that's repeated over and over. There's a while loop. That's one main loop that we're going to be discussing. And there's also a for loop. And let's just comment this for loop out. So while loop, in this parentheses, it takes in a condition. So it repeats something while it's true. So we can have a switch, we'll call it S. And then right here, we'll do bool S. Unless you remember, we can set that to true. Because you can do true right here, but in that case, it's just going to be running forever. And that's something you don't want to do. And we can do int I, and or we can do int C um, for counter. I'm going to set that at zero. And then in here, we can do, let's take this. And let's put that in here. And for this one, let's go ahead and put in the C. So now it's going to repeat this, putting in C until S is false. So if you want to change something, we can use an if statement. If statement is similar to the while, it has a condition. And if a condition happens, something happens. So we need to say if um, C is greater or equal to 10, then we'll set S to false. So if C gets greater than 10, then it's going to stop. You can also do else. So if that doesn't happen, then we can do C plus plus. So the C plus plus has nothing to do with the name. It's actually the same thing as C equals C plus 1, which can also be written as C plus equals 1. So just like that. So let's just do that. And this can be done with other arithmetic, and not just plus. It can be done like that and whatnot. But plus plus, that's what we're doing. So while it's in here, it's going to repeat this, and we can go ahead and run it. And there it is. The C incremented one at a time all the way until it reached 10, and it did this calculations. Though there is a shorter and a simpler way of doing this, and this is with the four. The for is a kind of like a complex version of this, where you can state your variable right here, and then afterwards you have what you're checking for, and then C++ would go right here. And then what you actually want to have repeating would just be down here. And we can have that run. And this is actually going to be the reverse. It's going to do it until then, or until it's not then. Because um, this is checking until then, this is doing it while it's not. But as you can see, it ran the same code twice. 
and this is obviously way shorter than this. But this is kind of more readable in a sense because you can kind of see where it breaks up. That's the while, that's checking for something, that's doing something if this one failed right here. If you want to have multiple checks you can do else if and then you can check for something in here and then you can have another else if here or you can just have your final else and that's for just checking multiple things. If one thing fails it goes to the next one, if that fails it goes to the next one. This is most of the basics of C++. There's another thing I wanted to cover, it's a structure. The structure is used for encapsulating things um, such as your variables or even functions. Now, there's a structure, there's also something called a class. It's basically a namespace that keeps, or a space that keeps track of things within it. So this structure, we can call it a person, and we'll go ahead and open it. And you close this one with this semicolon. And in here, we can have an STD, oh, STD, standard, string, we'll call that their name, and we have int, and then age. And we can also have double wallet. So this is going to keep track of the person's name, age, and how much money they have in their wallet. And we can make a new function. This function can be void. So void is something that means it just returns nothing. So this one returns an integer. This one returns an integer. This one returns nothing. So in here we can do, um, we can call the name of this function wallet as well. And in this function we're going to pass in a person. So we have person and let's call it p. So in here we can print out some information about this person. We can do p name and then space has and then we can just say p dot wallet and dollars. So now it's going to take in the person and it's going to say this person's name has this many dollars. And in here in our main function we can go ahead and actually make a new person called p1 and we can do p1 name equals Joe and p1 age equals 10 and p1 dot wallet equals 45 and of course you can just write it like that too it'll work and if we were to go ahead and run this wallet so this wallet's name um, I guess we can call this show wallet so there's no confusion but it's not related to this wallet this wallet it's inside the struct we can do show wallet and we can do uh, p1 it's like that and we can make another person p2 we can say p2.name equals mike and p2.wallet equals 10 and here show wallet p2 just like that and go ahead and run it there it is joe is 45 dollars and mike is 10 dollars so that's basically for keeping track of things um, for organizing your code if you want to have a structure you just have the things inside of it and then you can actually go and declare it this might have been a little bit over 10 minutes I'm not even sure but this is all the basics that you need for learning C++ if you want to go ahead and practice once again this link is in the description and I would think a good way to practice is by adding some features to this person structure such as their height and uh, if they're married so married it can be bold married so that's just true or false and just things like that and then you can have some functions for just outputting information about them you can also do some more functions for math equations you can do a function for the circumference of something or the area of something so it's going to be kind of it's pretty simple um, I would just say just practice that and then when you run you want to run your functions just run them in this main function Thanks again for watching. If you guys are interested in more videos that are similar, feel free to leave a like and let me know you guys want to learn about. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment about that too. And see you guys again next time. Bye.